Hi, welcome to the screencast for 171. Chapter 171 introduces us to the idea of equilibrium. And you've maybe heard the word equilibrium before when you think about your balance, your equilibrium that your inner ear helps you with. When most of us think of a chemical reaction, we think of what's called a complete reaction. That would be where all the reactants become products and the reaction only goes one direction. The reactants become products, but products don't turn back into reactants. The reality is, um, is that most reactions are actually incomplete or reversible reactions. So not all the reactant turns into product. And in fact, some of the product turns back into reactant or runs in the reverse direction. And at some point, the process becomes balanced or equal between the forward and the reverse reaction. So when reactions reach a point of balance between making reactant and making product, it's called equilibrium. Equilibrium is defined as a point of balance in which opposing changes cancel each other. This means the amount of product and the amount of reactants remain constant. So it's like a tug of war that neither team can win, even though both teams are still working or trying. And it's said to be a state of action, not inaction, because it's not like the forward and reverse reactions have stopped. It's just that they're equal to each other. Just like in a tug of war, neither team has quit. It's just at an equilibrium or a balance. So looking at this graph, um, you can see that the amount of products and reactants remain constant, even though they're not equal. So looking at the graph, the concentration for the blue line and the red line decrease over time. So that lets me know those are the reactants. The purple line starts out with a concentration of zero, so that must be a product, and that increases over time. And then where the dashed line is at, you see that all three lines plateau or become flat, have zero slope. That lets you know that the concentration isn't changing. So that is where the equilibrium has been reached. And just like we learned in chapter 16, the left side of the graph, then to the left of the dotted line, that's showing the reaction rate. And you can see that the reaction rate starts slowing down right away. It starts up quick and slows down over time as there's fewer and fewer collisions. And then eventually the reaction rate is zero or you're at an equilibrium. Um, some reactions result in almost complete conversion of reactants to products. There are complete reactions, and certainly um, a number of them in our day-to-day -day lives. When you fry an egg, we don't have a way to reverse that, so it's a complete reaction. So there's an almost complete conversion of reactants to products. The reaction um, is said to go to completion. It's not easily reversible. And so the graph for that would look like the one I've indicated here, that your products would get very high, your reactants would get close to zero, if not zero. But when you reach the equilibrium, um, the reactant would be at zero instead of some number greater than that. Reversible reactions then are reactions that go both in the forward and the reverse direction. We show this by using a double arrow, whereas a complete reaction, we use just a single arrow. They reach equilibrium, which means some reactant will be left. And an important thing to realize is this means that the reaction will not yield as much product as we were predicting. So if you remember back to chapter 11 when we were doing stoichiometry, looking at the limiting reactant, look at how much product you could make, you will never make that much product um, because the reaction will typically be reversible. Then chapter 16, we talked about how fast you make that product or the reaction rate and now in chapter 17, we're looking and focusing on how much product you'll make or the equilibrium. The law of chemical equilibrium says at a given temperature, a chemical system may reach a state in which a particular ratio of reactant and product concentrations has a constant value. So that means a reversible reaction will reach an equilibrium depending on the starting concentrations of each substance and the temperature that you run it at. It also means we can change the equilibrium by changing the concentrations or changing the temperature. We also have the option to change the pressure or the volume, as we'll find out in section 17.2. But we can actually calculate this constant or this uh, value. It's called the equilibrium constant and is abbreviated KEQ. So how do we calculate equilibrium constant? Since it's comparing the amount of product to the amount of reactant that you have at equilibrium, you simply take the concentration of the products at equilibrium and divide by the concentration of the reactants at equilibrium. So if your equilibrium constant is greater than one, it means you have more products than reactants. So we say the products are favored or the equilibrium lies to the right. 
When the equilibrium constant is less than 1, it means there's more reactants than products. So the reactants are favored, or the reverse reaction, and the equilibrium lies to the left.